I started patrolling in 2000, and you know, there's no manual for how to protect a river. So we evolved a patrol, but we also were looking for ways to help the river. The question I kept getting from the public was, you know, how's the water? How's the water? Nobody knew what the water quality in the Hudson was, and we wanted to know. As I started thinking about how to work for this river, you can't help a river without the public buying in. You can't do it. And, you know, it just dawned on me that if we started sampling water quality for swimming, we would engage a large public, and the hope was that that public would then become interested in all the other things the river needs us to think about on its behalf. And so it was a mechanism. One of the early findings was that the tributaries, these little beautiful creeks that reach the Hudson, which look gorgeous, um, are often more highly contaminated than the big, muddy Hudson with the bad reputation. And that's what really led us into this citizen science work, to build out these teams to be able to measure water quality on a whole creek or a whole river in a single day and really get a snapshot of what that water quality is like. Our program is focused on looking at indicators for sewage pollution, but really what we have is a platform for science, and that's 170 people going out across 800 plus miles of water every month to grab a sample, over 440 samples per month. That gives an unprecedented scope, unprecedented geographic range, at an unprecedentedly kind of small price because you're using citizen scientists to gather that data. The involvement of citizen scientists really, in part, is the goal, you know, is to get people involved in, in measuring water quality that they care about. Um, because that power comes from that. It's not just the data, but it's the people. And that's really critical to the success of the whole, the whole program. Our mission is to help monitor the river to make sure that it is clean and stays clean. Clean water means it's, it's less expensive for people to, to treat their water. There's a lot of kayaking, fishing, canoeing, swimming. It really filters down to every, everyday life and everything we do. I want these privileges that we have to continue on so generations can enjoy it as well. My designated area is the headwaters of the Lower Sopus Creek. And within that area, there's four sample sites. The entire Lower Sopus is about 34 miles long from the headwaters to where it enters the Hudson River in Saugerties. It's a bit of a hike to get to some of them. It usually takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to do them all. And then I take the samples to the Maritime Museum in, in Kingston, New York, where the riverkeeper maintains a water quality lab. There they get checked in, and I'll get duplicate bottles for the next sampling time. I was always amazed at the amount of people that didn't know that their water came from the Hudson River. We have 7,000 customers 
between the village and the town that the village services and it's, the river is a lifeline for us providing that water source for us on a daily basis. On average month we pump 12 to 15 million gallons of water to a reservoir outside of the village. Every morning starting at 3 a.m. we turn on the pumps and fill our reservoir up on top of Hiley and then that feeds the distribution system all day long. Or if we run out of water what are we going to do? We have a three-day supply and that's it. Here in Poughkeepsie we produce about 10 million gallons, 11 million gallons a day that people use. That serves a population, a resident population of about 80,000, 81,000, and then during the day, all the businesses, IBM, all the hospitals, all the shopping. So on any given day, about 100,000 people get drinking water from the Hudson River. And I read the reports all the time. It's as good as we can get it now, clean, clear, disinfected, very good. I remember the first time I ever swam in the Hudson. It was probably in the mid 80s. And as a kid, you didn't swim in the Hudson. You know, it was just the 70s. Nobody's gonna go in the water. And a friend of mine had a boat. They're gonna go water skiing. And I was in the Hudson? And he says, Croton Point, it's really nice, beach. And it was, it was beautiful. And it wasn't until years later that, you know, we worked on water quality here, but now I swim in the Hudson every chance I get. <laughs> so I think things have gotten better you know, over the years. My routine is I get up, uh, jump on the bike, roll down the hill three blocks to the Navy Yard, go to my spot, my dock where our boat is where I take high school kids out rowing, and I sample right there because when we're putting the boat in the water that's where they're going to come into contact. It's right across from an outfall, so if it's rained a lot I can see pretty quickly that the water quality is different. But some days it looks great and the number is still high, you know, so that's why you test. We test once a week on Thursdays in order to have the results on Friday so that we can post them on Friday night before the weekend. I'm not too surprised by the improvement of the river just because there are so many passionate people working on it. Our group is small, but there are many, many small groups that also have been working together. So um, we have teamed up and just even in the past 10 years, we've seen very good results. And so it's really exciting just to work with so many other passionate people that feel the same way that I do. Historically, the river was not a desirable place to be, and it's because the water quality was so poor, and um, I, I think that's changing. The number that I often tell people, which I think usually surprises them, is that about 80% of the samples that we collect are okay for swimming-like contact. I think if you look now at a lot of the towns up and down along the river, or if you look in New York City, there's a tremendous amount of interest in, in redeveloping the waterfronts of these towns. And I think there's a direct line that you can draw between that economic opportunity and the water quality. It's no secret what GE and other companies did to that river. We're trying to raise awareness in this local community all the time. It supplies, I think, 80,000 people with drinking water. It's my greatest resource. It's 90% of the you know, ingredients of my beer. Um, there's four ingredients that make it, but 90% of it is water. 
And people are like, oh my God, you, you use the river water? I'm like, well, you know, it comes from our town municipality and uh, it's, you know, uh, cleaned and, and just like any river water would be anywhere else. And truth be told, for brewing, it's great water. So, I mean, people around this country would kill for this type of water to make their beer. It's a uh, lower mineral content, it's a surface water runoff shed which also contributes to some of the things that go into the river in terms of, you know, toxins and things that pollute. But in terms of trace minerals and brewing, it's, it's world-class brewing liquor, which is, which is amazing. It's a great natural resource. It's beautiful. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's coming around. For our events, people come from all over the world to, uh, to swim around Manhattan. We're at JFK uh, Marina Park here in Yonkers, and uh, this is a six and a half mile uh, swim that will head south uh, uh, in the Hudson River down to uh, Inwood. And uh, we have 200 swimmers uh, uh, from all over, all over the world here today. The Hudson River definitely has a reputation for not being uh, the cleanest, but I also don't think it's as bad as what everyone pegs it out to be. I did, you know, talk to my dad before the race, and he was like, pop some antibiotics. Uh, I kind of took it as a joke. He wasn't joking, though, so, um, but I'm excited. The, the big story about the Hudson is, is, unfortunately, you can't answer it with a simple phrase. It's not one river. Uh, the water quality varies from place to place. It varies over time. So we see in places uh, like, like where we are here in Garrison, water quality is often excellent here. And it's a great place to go swimming almost all the time. A lot of places through this stretch you could say that about. You get up into the Capital District and it's almost the opposite story. You know, there you've got combined sewers that are releasing sewage to the water still uh, every time it rains and we see the impact of that and there's still a lot of unsafe water quality. So there are places that are good, there are places that need work, and uh, we're, we're defining where those places are. We want to count on having clean air and we want to count on having clean water. And I want to hear, I want to fight for having protecting both of those so that we have protection for generations to come. We're not talking just now until 2021. We got to do this for, for our children and their children because the Hudson River is going to be their source forever. So my vision for the Hudson is above all a healthy Hudson, meaning a thriving river of life. And then right behind that is a river that is drinkable by us and swimmable by us and fishable by us. But above all, it, it itself must be healthy. Its body must be healthy. That's my hope. I, I know it's not happening in my lifetime. And I'm aware that I'm a custodian of a battle that handed off to others and others and others. But the goal is a healthy river that we've disconnected from and the river thrives in parallel with our human society. <laughs>